His cinnamon, signature cinnamon, cinnamon smoked old cinnamon fashion. Smoked old fashion. <laughs> He's got it. Go for it. <clears throat> Woo. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> Wait, move. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not going to do it as cool as Chad. <laughs> Ready? I'll move. Nobody asked you to. You're on a roll. I need to say something. You've been dominating. Hey guys, we're here with Chad Whittington, longtime childhood friend of mine. We've known each other for a uh, long time. Yeah. yeah, like almost 30 something years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You grew up not in the same neighborhood, but pretty close. We're super excited because Chad is a very well known bartender and influencer in the Charlotte area. We're here to kind of learn a little bit about why Chad is so highly recognized as a bartender here in Charlotte with his mixology, of course and he is going to teach us how to make his signature cinnamon smoked old fashioned. <laughs> That's right. We are literally going to start off with a 100% rye whiskey just because of the different bitters that I'm using and a little bit of organic agave and I always like this because I always forget something out of my cabinet but then I'm like, hey, there it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's once again how bartenders just kind of roll. We're always like, oh man, where's this, where's that? So even at home, I'm kind of the same way. Um, so I like using a 100% rye whiskey um, the reason why is just because uh, with all the different flavors of bitters that we're going to be using and agave, that's going to kind of help give us that sweetness that we need so we don't have to like really, you know, use like a sweeter whiskey like a bourbon or something like that. So this is Canadian and American whiskey blended by Whistle Pig whiskey. So I'm using two ounces of that and since we're making three, that's why this is going to look so full and big. Right. So there's that. Yeah, I love awesome. the pig yeah. Yeah. spout too. So that is, uh, I think his name is, I cannot remember the pig's name. I always want to say Wilbur, but that's from Charlotte's Web, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not Wilbur. So after we do two ounces of our whiskey, we're going to do a quarter ounce to each old fashioned of agave syrup. So we're going to use three quarters ounce total for the three old fashions that we're using. Now and is then, this a recipe you came up with all on your own or yeah, what kind so, of inspired you to make this cocktail? As I started making cocktails for like a lot of like dinner parties and just like private parties and things like that, I was noticing that I was taking so much time just building one old fashioned. So I kind of started thinking of like, how can I make a cool recipe that I can just batch all together and just pour straight from a bottle over ice. Don't even have to really worry about stirring it and serving to where it tastes so great. Okay. And that's actually what's aging in this barrel here is a signature a whistle pig, uh, piggyback rye old fashioned. So everything that's in this old fashioned that I'm making is actually just aging in this barrel. So I'll usually age it for about a month and then I'll extract it into bottles and just keep it in my wow. refrigerator and then I'll tr fill this back up. Okay. So it just kind of keeps getting that age on it. So what kind of, like I said, what makes this cool is I'm using 100% rye, organic agave, and then I use three different types of bitters. Um, so of course, Angostura aromatic. So I do two dashes each. So that's six, you know, for the three that we're doing. For my orange bitters, I actually do a mix of Fee Brothers and Reagan's number six. Sometimes with bitters, some are more bitter, some are more sweet, some have more like flavor. Sure. Bitters are like the salt and pepper of your cocktails, right? They're these tiny little like formulated alcoholic tinctures that pack so much flavor that that's why they're measured in dashes. With me just knowing the flavor profiles of that, I mix my bitters half and half between Fee Brothers and Reagan's number six. And same thing, just two dashes of that orange. And then last, just to kind of really help bring out some really cool aromatic and flavor notes of this rye, um, I do chocolate bitters. Okay. But I go heavy on the chocolate bitters, so I do three dashes each rather than just two just to really help kind of build that uh, flavor profile of the cocktail. So after that, we are gonna grab some ice to stir this mm -hmm. with. Okay. And um, what's great is like your local grocery stores now, of course, since they know that everyone's making drinks at home, there's this really great like handcrafted ice that's frozen so you can see how clear it is. Oh yeah. And then we're just gonna stir this for about 15, 20 seconds, just to give it a nice chill and dilution. So what kind of made you get into bartending or how did you, you know, figure out that you loved the mixology side and creating new cocktails? So it's funny, a lot of people ask me this and I always tell them this story. 
Um, I was probably 14 or 15 years old, um, right before I could drive, because I was kind of a little hellacious kid, um, I got grounded. And so one night my dad comes upstairs and he's like, hey, what are you doing tonight? And I'm like, well, nothing because you grounded me so I can't go anywhere. He's like, oh, well, I've got some friends coming over. We're gonna play pool and listen to music. Why don't you come downstairs and bartend for us? Because we had a wet bar built into our house. So I was like, okay. He's like, I'll, I'll give you like 150 bucks. So I was like, sounds great. So I went and downstairs and learned how to make an old fashioned, a Greyhound and just like a Crown and Coke, right? After doing that and seeing like how stoked all these uh, people were that I was making these cool drinks for them, um, that's when I decided that like, you know, the hospitality industry was really something like for me, um, just because it allowed my personality to shine while doing something kind of cool. Sure. Yeah. So literally from that moment, I was like, man, I want to be like in the restaurant industry and like make my way up to this. Um, and so that's kind of where it all started. I know how important, you know, your dad is to you and everything that yeah. you do as well. So um, it's I mean, awesome. Josh definitely knew my dad from yeah. basketball and baseball, from being the coach and stuff like that for our teams. And uh, yeah, my dad was just uh, always just like such a, just a good host all right. the time. Right. Birthday parties were always a cool deal. I mean, my entire, first family is all from Charlotte. So every family function that we did, you had to deal with the A McConnells, the Petersons and the Whittingtons, you know, right. um, because that's just part of what that was. So after we get this old fashioned poured on ice, uh, I am gonna use this really cool smoke top from Middleton Mixology. And we're gonna just load that up with some cinnamon chips. And then I am literally just going to smoke this to where the glass gets infused with this cinnamon smoke. And after that kind of dies out, I just kind of, because the chips amazing. don't, the chips don't really like burn as like much as you would think. So you're just not going to get like this ashy flavor or anything like that. So that's why you can kind of do three really quickly. And it's crazy how much the like aromatics stay in the drink after you do this. And wow. so that's the signature. Ooh cinnamon smoked old fashioned and then of course it's not an old fashioned if you don't garnish it with some delicious luxardo cherries right that's my favorite part yep so that's where the passion behind the signature cinnamon cheers. smoked old fashioned cheers. comes cheers. from so thank you so cheers much cheers to you guys and like i said just right when you put your nose to it like all that cinnamon oh yeah you can really smell it damn oh that's delicious yeah like i said I'm an old fashioned guy, yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's just oh, yeah. in, every, in every sense of the way. And well, also, and I, just, I love old fashioned. Yeah, so. and this is, I've always called this my no, like, this is a foolproof old fashioned because you're not muddling anything. You're not having to worry about sugar cubes or right. making a simple syrup or anything like that. The cool thing about bitters is, is they don't ever really go bad. So it's like, you know, if, if you're buying other things to make an old fashioned, like oranges or all that's going to go bad a little bit over time if you're not using it every day. These bitters and agave will just shelf life forever. Yeah, so I would say now that we're uh, enjoying these old fashions, let's go uh, grab a seat okay. on my couch and uh, hang out with my plants and my records. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so not only are you really considered one of the top bartenders in Charlotte, but you have a very unique fashion sense. You have a large following. A lot of people would consider um, you know, you're one of the top influencers in Charlotte. Tell us a little bit about you know, how you got into the fashion sense. Just having a cool eclectic group of friends from all over. Um, and then, you know, of course, my parents and I, we traveled a lot. And I was just such a social butterfly that like I couldn't just hang out right there with my parents. Like if we were on a beach, I'm like, hey, if there's a random kid around here, <laughs> he's my best friend. Yeah. You know, and I've always been like that. So of course, you know, touring with bands and seeing different fashion trends and all over just kind of helped me develop my like own personal style, which also led me into what I do now, which is content creation. I was kind of curating this look for bands and it was kind of like my role to make sure that like, okay, we've got to submit a photo to this PR girl for this, so let's make sure this looks good. Right. And I was like, oh, this is something that I've found that I love to do, but also am good at doing. And I think that's what's resonated very well with a lot of brands that I work with is because they're like, okay, we've got this guy, he's heavily tattooed, he's usually big bearded kind of guy, he bartends, he listens to music, he's got records everywhere. Um, so this is a cool niche for us because it, it reaches this different demographic than you know what we're normally doing. Yeah. 
Man, thanks so much for having us. Yeah, you got it. Really appreciate you always uh, being so hospitable to us. So thanks for letting us come in, showing us the ropes on mixing up some things, which we have no idea about. So really appreciate that. But for the audience who wants to kind of dig in a little more to who you are, and of course, you know, anybody who's looking to be even deeper into Charlotte, where can they find you first off? And, and how can they, um, find you on social media. So my Instagram is chat is rad. Um, it's literally just that simple. There's no spaces. Um, so just chat is rad. Come have a drink with me at the bar. Um, if I'm working, if not, check me out on social media, see what I've got going on. I've always got some virtual happy hour or, you know, cocktail class going on. Looking forward to continuing to follow you, man. This is great. Yeah, cheers. Cheers, Thank my you man. for this amazing cheers. Yeah, Thanks so much for hanging out. Cheers. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, absolutely.